I'm pretty new here, so it's going to take a while for you guys to get to know me. Uh, however, today, what my planning goal is, is to do a meal prep stretch. And what that is, I'll explain in a second. I just want to start this off by saying that our cupboards have not been this bare since pre-pandemic. I've been fortunate and grateful enough to be keeping a working stockpile going and always have extra on hand. We have two freezers and a fridge, so um, we have space to keep things. However, I have on purposely run all the freezers and pantries down because it is good to, you know, keep things new and make sure you're actually working through your stock. Otherwise, you know, it's just a waste of money, really, and not good because other people could be using that food. So, so... Okay, so please don't be scared. What I've come up with is a, I don't have any shortcut pastry in the pantry of you. Make your pastry. And what you want to do with your hands is just pull it through and pull your hands like that. And what it does is just like, I don't really have a menu plan today. I'm just kind of winging it. And the first thing I'm kind of going for is a quiche that I'm going to pop in the oven with some of the kale. And this is just 100 grams of butter, some flour, salt, and a little teaspoon of sugar. And just a tip for when you're making your homemade pastry at home is you want to chop the butter up as small as you can before you add it to the flour. That way when you're combining them all together, it makes it a whole lot easier and you have much more of a flaky, smooth pastry. It all pulls together. It's very simple to do. Anyone can make it. You can have a pastry ready in five minutes, really. And the whole thing probably cost me maybe $1.50, $1.60 for this whole pie pastry. So um, that's pretty good going, actually. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of ice water and get my pastry all together, wrap it up in some cling film and let it rest and relax in the fridge for just 30 minutes. And then we can roll it out and put it in our pie pan. Hey guys, I'm back. I decided to hijack resting the pastry because life is too short for me today. <laughs> um, I added a tablespoon of LSA mix because I don't think it's going to make much difference to the texture of it, but it will add a little fibre and protein to the pastry itself. And I always aim to be as healthy as I can where I can. I'm going to roll this out into the KitchenAid pie dish and butter up the pan. And then I will may rest it, we'll see how it goes. And then I'll par bake it and get working on my vegetable prep. Okay, so the inner chef in me really hated not resting the pastry, so if you have the time, I highly recommend to do that. Anyway, I am going to let it rest in the pan for about 20 minutes, and then I'll put it in the oven and let it park cook for vegetables and whatever we're going to see what we can find in the fridge, and some eggs and some cheese, salt and pepper, and make a homemade quiche. Okay, so here's a real life update. I'm just turning these Coles um, beef patties into a Duke and Donald cheeseburger. Um, we've tried a couple of the brands from Lily's and Coles, and these ones are the grass fed. I think it's a cold organic brand and they really are so close for like a McDonald's cheeseburger patty. You've got to try them out. They're so, so good. And what I'm going to do is, I don't even know what the pan for the onions because as you can see, the oil comes out of the patties and then you can just chuck the onions in the oil and they'll crisp up that way. And then once they're done, I'll make room and toast these buns. And then we're going to add some, just up some of these um, buns that we have here. I don't even butter the buns because I'm just going to add a bit of mayonnaise and this cheeseburger sauce. Like I said, so close to McDonald's, you really have to give it a try. And a bit of cheese and yeah, Bob's your uncle. We're going to have a quick um, side burger on the side of doing all the veg prep. This is an update here of what I have going. I've peeled two onions back there um, so I can steal a little bit for our burgers. And I'm going to um, clean this kale up and give it a chop and a wash. And then in my other pan, I'll saute up a bit of the onion for the quiche, add some garlic and put the kale just, just enough down. So when we add it to the quiche pan, it's not tasting like raw baked kale in a pie. <laughs> it's going to taste way better if you just give it a quick saute first. So let's go. Here we go guys, this is our burger for our lunch and yeah, once again, trust me, you've really got to try these Coles Organic Beef Patties. I think they're like thyme and parsley or something, but once you cook them up, the texture is exactly like a McDonald's cheeseburger, but way better and healthier because you made it for yourself at home. I'm going to carry on with our quiche and veg prep, but I just thought I'd show you a real life update. This is my son's little burger and they're amazing. Let's carry on with cooking. Okay, so here's our next update. I'm just sautéing off the onions for the quiche and I par baked the... Peach pie, it actually looked quite good. I wasn't really hoping for the colour of my onions, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to add a little spidge of water to help wilt it down. And then season it however you like. I'm just going to add um, Costco garlic and some herbs and salt and pepper. And then I'll add the kale and turn the pan off because you don't really want to cook it. I'm just wilting it down and help it cook along. And then I'll leave it in the pan to cool down completely before I add it into the quiche because we still have our egg mixture to make. Let's keep going.
This is just a low carb flour mix that I do myself. I just add some chickpea flour, some lentil flour and rice flour, depending what I have at the time. But I've been doing this for a while now and when we're feeling like being a bit more healthier, we'll do a low carb flour mix. Depending on what you're baking, sometimes it will affect it. So be careful with that. But if you're interested in how I make my low carb flour mix, let me know in the comments below. Um, so in here I found a questionable bit of feta that I had sitting at the back of the fridge. It was a basil infused, so I decided to crumple that and add it to there. Um, for the KitchenAid quiche um, pie dish, I used eight eggs, if you're wondering, and about a quarter cup of milk. And then I just did some salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic uh, powder again. The one from Costco is really good. I'm going to whisk that up and then pour it into our quiche pan. Okay, let's pour the egg mixture in. It's going to be embarrassing if I haven't got enough, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be okay. <laughs> let's go. Perfecto. So this is the veg prep chopped up. This is going to go probably to a soup later, I'm thinking. But as my knife is cooling, I'm going to take a halt here. The quiche is cooking in the oven. And when I clean the celery, as you would have saw, um, don't be scared to use some of the celery leaves in soups and things. They're quite delicious and celery is a really excellent superfood for you. So just a little tip there. Like I'm basically getting, you know, this celery in this soup for free almost without even counting all these celery sticks here. Woolworths had two celeries for two, uh, two for four dollars this week, sorry. So that's pretty good actually considering celery has been $5.90 around here. So I went ahead and got a celery box here. They're all washed and cleaned up so my son can come do peanut butter celery whenever he's feeling like a little snack. And the leftover carrots are there. I also have the onion there from earlier. So when I'm ready to start prepping my, probably going to be a chicken soup with Maybe some pasta if we've got something in the cupboard. Um, honestly, I'm probably not going to chop the kale till a little bit later. Like I said, Bubba Mouth is calling me. So I just thought I'd leave you there and I'll catch up with you when our quiche is done. So here's just a little update of the fridge. It's definitely looking a lot cleaner and better. My soup things are prepped there. As you can see, ready. this is the quiche um, out the oven. I'm sorry, I already took some out for the little toddler and he loved it. I just chopped his up in little square pieces and he is going to town. Now... Just to say, usually I will put bacon in the quiches that we make, or it really sometimes zucchini, mushrooms, real garlic, depends what we have, but like I said, I am trying to use up the ingredients that I have just before I do my big shop, so today it was just the kale, the onion and the garlic, and I have tried to do, work out how much it would have cost for this entire quiche, and we're easily going to get, I'd say, oh, maybe eight, eight to ten good serves out of this, because their family is quite small, um, but yeah, it's always handy to make. So the pastry probably cost me about $1.60 and I used half of the kale, so that's $1.50 there. I used eight eggs, so $3. So, so far $6 and then a bit of the cheese. So, you know, for this whole pan, $7. And I, I'm not sure how much Coles will charge you for one of their prepackaged um, quiche. I'm pretty sure they do sell those. I've never got one myself, but I'll have to do a price compare and let you know. But this is completely homemade and it is delicious. The, the pastry is... Um, I'll probably cook that for a couple extra minutes. I'll probably let the whole thing go a little too long, to be honest. But it is still delicious. And the pastry kind of has a biscuity crumb because I um, put some of the low-carb flour in there, like I told you. But it tastes so delicious. Oh, just delicious. Mm, whoever said kale wasn't good for you. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, so we're back. And the baby loved his quiche. And now he's just having a little play in the background. You may hear him cooing an iron. We have some chicken thighs that I'm going to use up next and I'm probably just going to turn this into a chicken vegetable soup of some description. I don't have any um, chicken stock so I'm just going to coat the chicken with some seasoning and fry it off in the pot first, take it out and then I'll probably deglaze the pan and hopefully all this will make a tasty enough meal for our family and then because like I said we are quite small so I'll probably end up freezing a couple of batches and chucking it in the freezer so me and the baby will eat. We'll take a bag out in the morning, put it in and defrost it 
and then by the time lunch comes I'll heat it up and me and the baby have a healthy lunch so that's what we're going to work on today I also took these English muffins out the freezer the other day so we'll use those up with dinner and there's a single bread roll there and that will be gone too so let's get cooking So I've just got some oil and a little bit of butter at the bottom of the pan there, heated it up and I sprinkled some paprika, salt, pepper and garlic, a little bit of onion powder on the chicken thighs and we're just going to give them a couple minutes to colour up and then I'll flip them over, give them another couple of minutes and this will start the flavour at the bottom of the pan. So yeah, like I said, because we don't have stock, that's why I've gone ahead and seasoned the chicken up first. So when we add um, some liquid to deglaze the pan, we start to get some flavours going. And yeah, after we've done that, we'll go ahead and add our veg and I'll catch up with you then. Okay, so like I said guys, I really am working my pantry down at the moment, hence not having any chicken stock. I also don't have any tomato paste, which is nearly unheard of for our family, <laughs> or pizza sauce. So we are going to improvise, and like I said, I found these cherry tomatoes, we'll chop those in. I'm going to chuck them in now. I just chop them up and I'm going to cook those down and wilt them down a little bit, um, and that can add as our, you know, whatever our tomato element of this is going to end up being. So I'm just sweating down the vegetables now, and I have deglazed the pan, and all of the... Um, colour that was coming off the meat before is all the flavours coming up into the vegetables now and because we're only using water I'm going to go ahead and season the vegetables up as well with some of the things that we had on the chicken so we'll just do some paprika and some garlic do some oregano pepper and we'll just give that a bit of a mix don't be scared of the colour of the bottom of the pan because when we add our water, which would usually be stock, we'll bring all this up anyway and add to the flavour of your soup. I also don't add the garlic just yet. It depends what kind of um, garlic that you're using. I have a couple of fresh cloves that I chopped up. I'm going to add them the same time I add the potatoes and the liquid and I'm just going to let all of this do its thing for a little while and then add our chicken back in and we'll turn this into a super stock. There was only two cups there because, as I said, we're just going to get this going. It smells pretty good. Now, I've just realised I didn't actually add the garlic first to give it a quick sauté, but whatever. Our family loves garlic anyway, and this is going to cook for a good hour. My little bubba might need me, so we will be back. Okay, so the chicken's come up to a boil, and I'm just going to add a bag of frozen broccoli that I found and chuck the lid on and let it simmer for about 25 minutes, and then we'll come back and decide together what this is going to turn into. We're back, so I snuck a try and it is delicious. The stock is quite beautiful actually and I've just forked the chicken. So there's quite a bit of meat in the pot, stretched out quite nicely for full thighs. And um, there's kale in there, celery, carrots, garlic, um, seasoning. And this is what the toddler's going to have for his dinner. He's more or less had the same as us. I've blitzed his up and um, added some rice to that. And the meat stretched quite, quite more than I thought. We have a lot in our pot left over and this is what the toddler's going to have. He's quite excited as you can hear in the background there. So we're going to go eat and like I said we have quite a bit left over in the pot. I'm going to put a couple in bags and freeze some for me and the baby during the week and I'll decide if I'm going to keep some and maybe chuck some curry powder into the rest of the sauce for tomorrow night's dinner and I'll update you then. Okay guys, just before I wrap it up there, just wanted to show you that the children absolutely loved our dinner tonight so I really encourage you guys to give it a go. Um, the toddler all of it gone and my 10 year old they both really really loved it both approved so that's got to be a good thing what we have over here is two lunches that i zip look bag for next week for me and the toddler while the 10 year old's at school and i have saved one for tomorrow because yeah like i said it was really really good better than i actually expected the basil in the sauce really lifted up the stock so yeah um the whole pot i worked out to be just under ten dollars so i would say that that would be a success I appreciate you guys watching. I just wanted to also mention that if you wanted to, you could add some Mexican spice blend to the stock. Maybe a can of corn and black beans if you had it and turn it into a Mexican style chicken on rice. But the liquid for us, it really was delicious. You could taste the garlic and the basil and the kale is just, you know, kale's a superfood as well. So yeah, I really encourage you guys to give this a go. The whole meal cost us $10 to make and we got our whole family fed for tonight. Two lunches for me.